This is a special edition Sikkim podcast. I'm going to be critiqued at an incredibly high level. I know that. And I'm not going to be Kim Mulkey, and I'm not going to try to be Kim Mulkey. Um, But I am going to respect her legacy. Um, You know, certainly she made Baylor what it is. And, you know, I'm just going to be the best version of me and, and try to replicate the success, but do it my way. The Sikkim Podcast is a production of Baylor Athletics. Now, here are your hosts, Brooke Bednars and the voice of the Bears, John Morris. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Sikkim Podcast, a production of Baylor Athletics. John Morris, Brooke Bednars with you again this week. And, Brooke, this has been a busy week on the Baylor campus, particularly as it relates to Baylor women's basketball. Absolutely. I mean, it is a busy week. Campus is buzzing Finals are wrapping up. Students are super excited about that. There's graduations going on at McLean Stadium. Um, And on top of all of that, we had the opportunity to celebrate a new Lady Bears head coach, new beginnings. And, uh, you know, we've been able to kind of hear from her a couple of times now this week. And I think Nikki Collin is just going to be a great fit for the Baylor family to lead the Lady Bears into this new chapter. She has, uh, she's hit it out of the park so far. Got to town on Tuesday Mm -hmm. with her family, flew in, and then on Wednesday we had the formal introductory press conference in the Farrell Center. And it it was a great event. I thought she just handled everything really, really well. It was a lot of fun. It was super exciting to have all the other head coaches there, the search committee there. Um, the exec team, Baylor fans, the team was there. Um, and I think it was just super well done and a, a great way to start this new chapter, like I said earlier. And, you know, just to introduce Nikki Collin to the Baylor family and kind of allow them to see who she is. And one thing she talked about a lot is, is her why. And, we, you know, her why were right there right. with her, uh, her family and her three kiddos, two of which are twins. Um, so I'm super excited to have the Colin family here. Great to have them here. Tom is her husband. Uh, they coach together mm-hmm. several stops along the way. Uh, he will not be a coach here. She made that point. I think she was asked that, but <laughs> yes. he won't coach here. But uh, uh, And then Connor and Reese and Logan are their uh, three children. And uh, just so fun getting to know them, you know, getting them here. And then, you know, you just, you just ask questions, get to know them, hear them speak. And it's great to have them as part of the Baylor family already. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be um, a unique thing for the Lady Bears. She's coming from the WNBA. That's super exciting. That's going to help, I think, you know, the Lady Bears continue to grow and develop and be ready even more so for the next level. And uh, I think that was a huge attraction for them. And, you know, like she said a lot, this is the time to recruit her current team. Um, you know, kind of get them to know her, her to know them. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for the future and to see how it all pans out. Yeah, a lot of fun. Great credit to uh, to Mac Rhodes, our athletic director. We heard from him. We heard from uh, President Linda Livingstone at the press conference on t- on Wednesday. One of the things Mac said that I thought was really good, he, uh, he got an email. And, uh, in fact, here's the audio. Mac talked about this email and how impactful it was to him. Listen to this from Mac Rhodes. Yesterday, I received an email, and it, uh, it was about Nikki, and it wasn't a reference or a recommendation email. Rather, it was a confirmation email. And as I read the email, it captured why we hired Nikki. So if you'll allow me, I'd like to read this to you. This is an email, again, I received yesterday. Nikki, as you've come to learn in a very short period of time, is an amazing individual who will be a tremendous asset to Baylor. I've had the pleasure of working side by side with Nikki over the last several years and can share there is no equal. Our first year together in Connecticut proved She was much more than an assistant. She was nurturing, a teacher, a great observer, respected, and willing to help on any front. When we had the opportunity to bring her to Atlanta, there were no other candidates. 
She is loved by the athletes, staff, and fans alike. Nikki reciprocates by doing all that is necessary to surpass expectations and be equipped for every situation. I can assure you that Nikki will be better prepared than any coach in the Big 12 and would argue the country. Great things will continue for Baylor women's basketball. I'm so incredibly happy for Nikki, but equally for all of you. Working with Nikki is easy and delightful. She has no ego and wants only to please. That said, she will work hard with the team and get them ready for any and all circumstances on the court and in life. Her players know that she is a shoulder to lean on and a voice of reason. Her skills as a mother translate to the court and will do so with these young women she is about to coach. And most important, Nikki is a woman of faith, which helps guide her through her journey. Mr. Rhodes, you and your team have made the perfect choice for the future of the women's program. Chris, I agree. Her combination of high intellect and humility, her faith, her belief, and the way her Christian values align with Baylor's, and her unbelievable passion and wisdom for the game of basketball and the way she pours in to her players is why we selected Nikki Collin as the fifth head women's basketball coach here at Baylor University. Here's to new beginnings. Well, John, I think, you know, that email pretty much sums it all up. That was from the Atlanta Dream, former GM that worked with Coach Collin uh, closely day in and day out. And to have an email like that come across your desk, um, like he said, it wasn't a recommendation. It was a confirmation mm -hmm. email yeah, on yeah. the fact that the search committee and Mac had made that right choice. Uh, I just think that's, you know, those words speak a lot yeah. and uh, say a lot and um, you actually had the opportunity to visit with her, go one-on-one, -on -one, uh, kind of an introductory, if you will, um, you know, interview to introduce her to the Baylor family. And I can't think of a better way to do so for all of our sick and podcast listeners than to play that back and, uh, you know, allow them to, to see and hear firsthand from Coach Collin as she visits with you, none other than the voice of the Bears. Hi everybody, welcome in. I'm John Morris, welcoming in Baylor's new women's basketball coach, Nikki Collin, is with us. It is great to see you, it's great to meet you. Welcome to Waco and welcome to Baylor. Thank you. Happy to be here, for Pre sure. Appreciate you being here. You've hit the ground running. This has been uh, uh, a busy, eventful couple of days since you landed in Waco. Yeah, I mean, it's been just over 24 hours now since I've been Waco, so um, exciting. Um, probably stressful too. Um, have my whole family here, so they're trying to get acclimated as well. But really excited to you know continue to get to know this team um, and and all the people here at Baylor. I'm guessing uh, I said a busy couple of days, but it's been a busy week, hasn't it? Since all of this transpired, I mean a lot of things have happened over the last week. Yeah, coaching searches uh, don't take time. That's for sure. Um, you know, this, this really didn't become real for me until Sunday. So we're talking about three days yeah. now ago. Um, knew of the job, had, had talked to the search firm, had talked to Mac once. But it wasn't until, you know, I got in front of the search committee and, and really the whole Baylor crew, Mac and Don and uh, Paul and uh, Javon, that I was like, this could actually happen, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so just an exciting time. I will tell you, those people... Um, the leadership here at Baylor are special. You know, you could feel their energy in the room. Um, you could tell how much they love this place, uh, which made it easier to make a decision to come to a place that you've never been before. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly Baylor has a great reputation, but I've, I'd never been on campus. I'd never been in the Farrell Center. Center. So, um, you know, it's, yeah, 
happen really fast. <laughs> you mentioned your uh, your family is here. Tell us about your family. Uh, three kids, Tom, your husband, and everybody's here in Waco, right? Everybody's now. here right now, yeah. including my parents. Um, so my parents have always been my biggest supporters. Um, ironically, they just moved to Georgia, uh -huh. um, kind of retired on the lake at Lake Oconee. Uh, but uh, yeah, Tom, my husband was a longtime coach in coaching 35 years. Uh, last stop as a head coach at Arkansas. I worked at times for him. Um, and then three kids, 16 year olds, twins, boy, girl, twins, uh, just turned 16 a few weeks ago and uh, a 13 year old that'll be 14 this summer. So um, big transition and teenagers, you know, right. get a little set in their ways. So um, the Baylor community needs to, to definitely embrace them because they're, they're a little uh, probably more in awe right now than, than I am. Uh, Connor, Reese, and Logan, they're going to love it. I I'll tell you, they will be embraced, and they're going to love it here in Waco, and they're going to love it at Baylor. Uh, this, you, you are now part of the Baylor family, and I heard you speak to that. That's uh, something that I'm sure Mac and Jovan and everyone talk to you about, you know, in talking to you about this job. Yeah, I think, I think it's bigger. Um, it's bigger than one sport here. It's, it's bigger than just athletics. Um, it's, it's getting back to the core of being a student athlete and what that means at Baylor. Um, but you can't help but get excited when you when you talk to Scott Drew and Dave Aranda, and you can. I've gotten a text from every coach on this campus, and and you know want us to be a part of that athletic community to really invest uh, back into the other sports. To you know, they've Baylor sports are exceptional, you know, across the board, and so you know being a part of something that's elite day in and day out um, is motivating. It's challenging, you know. It's, it's coaches making other coaches better and being able to bounce best practices off one another. And, and that's what's different between the pros and college. You know, you're on an island, you're a franchise, but it's all uh, women's basketball. This is, this is different. This is an athletic community. What's the draw uh, leaving the WNBA, you know, to go back to college for you? It's this place. You know, it, it was not a – look, I didn't go to the WNBA because I had aspirations of being a WNBA head coach. I went to the WNBA because it was an opportunity to work with Kurt Miller at Connecticut, who was a good friend and a mentor and someone that I'd always wanted to coach with. It wasn't necessarily a destination, um, you know, and two years later I was a head coach in the WNBA. But, you know, it's about individual opportunities. It's about the right place at the right time. It's about what's best for your family. And, and uh, this was just too good an opportunity to pass up. Uh, and uh, the, as the conversation started, uh, I'm curious about that. The first contact, maybe from Mac, or maybe it was somebody else. A had you even thought about this job or thought about a college job in the last few years? Um, you know, I think the last college job I was like truly interested in was when I was still an assistant at Connecticut and Davidson Open. Hmm. Um, and I thought that kind of aligned with where I would want to live and, and a place that my family would be really happy. Um, and, and really didn't get very far along with them, you know, and then, you know, six months later, I was a WNBA head coach. So, um, yeah, I think when I first started hearing about Kim really via the Nikki Fargus to potentially the aces in the WNBA conversation and then, OK, would Kim Mulkey go to LSU if, if Nikki left um, LSU? And so that was being bantered in the college game. But I was so uber focused on my team and training camp opening and COVID testing and regulations and things like that, that I wasn't thinking about any other job, but worrying about the 15 players that, you know, I was um, being paid to take care of in Atlanta. And so, you know, it really wasn't until the search firm reached out to me um, that, that the Baylor situation even really became anything more than, oh, it's interesting, Baylor's mm -hmm. open. Yeah. Interesting. A couple of Lady Bears uh, were there with you in Atlanta. Kalani Brown was there. Odyssey Sims were there. What was their reaction when uh, you told them the news? Yeah, I would say Kalani, <laughs> Kalani was, I like this move, Coach. I like this move. <laughs> That's great. Um, <laughs> you know, I've had, I, this was my second year with Kalani. Had her, had her in the bubble last summer. Um, Odyssey, someone who I've really just gotten to know in the last couple of months, you know, through free agency um, and, and her unique situation. But um, got very close to her very quickly and her son. And, um, you know, she since reached out to me and said, hey, I'm going to be there all the time. Like right. I said, well, you better because, you know, Jaden and I are buddies anyway. So I think they were both look, my team in general was incredibly supportive. Nobody knows better. But the players in that that room, what college means, huh. you know, they were all here. They know um, that 
this is a destination, you know? And so that made it easier for me because certainly walking away from a team, you know, 12 days before their first real game um, was, it was a difficult thing, but they all were supportive knowing what a great opportunity this was for me and knowing, hey, we're all out here trying to create our own opportunities right now. I think uh, one of the first things you did when you hit town was was meet with the current players. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, slightly awkward, a little, you know, it's on film and socially distanced and, you know, a lot of people surrounding, but, you know, just kind of wanted to start with, this is who I am. Like, this is my why. My family's my why, um, you know, and, and ultimately you're going to be a part of that uh, because to me, it, it, we're just one big family and that's, that's where I come from. Um, you know, but ultimately with them, it's about a first meeting. It's about starting for them to see me, how I speak, how I engage, mm -hmm. but then really dialing it back to let's meet individually. You know, let me get to know you individually. Let me know what you're passionate about. Tell me about your family. Um, tell me why you're at Baylor and, and, and tell me what you love about Baylor. Tell me what you don't love about Baylor. Like, and, and let me figure out if it's something that, that I can make better, you know? So I think it's, it's just the starting point. But that's, you know, my primary job right now is to re-recruit my own team. Yeah. And that really speaks to something I've heard about you already is, is you're real relationship driven. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm the, um, the toughest part about, about the WNBA at times for me is, is it can be transactional in nature. Waving a player, trading mm -hmm. a player. Um, those were things that just were never easy for me. And while I got used to doing them, it was a situation where I'd always said to myself, at the point where I'm, I can suddenly do this without it bothering my heart, I need to be out of coaching anyway. Um, because I've always said that players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Like, that's, that's what I live. I, I mean, and, and that's what I love. I love, you know, whether I'm the next legacy at Baylor or a footnote in Baylor's history, when I let, when I'm re hopefully retire from here, like I want people to feel like they were treated right, that they were loved, that I poured into them, um, and not just this team, but this community and this university. And um, you know, I, I want to touch so many different areas while I'm here. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you uh, you know, you're just now meeting the players. You hadn't even had those one-on-one -on -one meetings yet, but I'm sure you know you're uh, inheriting, you know, a program that is, is really high. I mean, really high level. This is not a fixer-upper, okay? I mean, things are in really good shape good here. Good use of words there yeah, here thank in Waco. You. Welcome well to done. Waco, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a program that is, you know, it doesn't need to be you know, risen from the ashes. Uh, I'm sure you understand that. Sure, there's more pressure, you know? I mean, obviously when you take over a, a program that has uh, not been good, you know, any sign of life uh, makes you a hero. Um, you know, that, that I'm gonna be critiqued at an incredibly high level, I know that. And I'm not gonna be Kim Mulkey and I'm not gonna try to be Kim Mulkey. Um, but I am going to respect her legacy. Um, you know, certainly she made Baylor what it is. And, you know, I'm just going to be the best version of me and, and try to replicate the success, but do it my way, you know. And so, you know, hopefully this community will embrace that, this university will embrace that um, and continue to um, be there for this team, you know, to support this team, to, to, to give us the best home court in the Big 12 and one of the best home courts nationally. Yeah. Part of the, uh, uh, the atmosphere here at Baylor is certainly we're faith-based. We don't shy away from that. I think that's something that you embrace as well. Absolutely. It's, it's incredibly important to me. Something that I think everybody's faith journey is different. Um, some people come to it supernaturally. Some people, you know, it takes an event in life that, you know, reconnects them to their faith. Um, you know, for me, I've always been faithful. I grew up in a home where we went to church. Um, I've always called myself a bit of a religious mutt because... My mom was Christian science. My dad was Episcopalian. They decided to join the Presbyterian church together. So I was baptized in the Presbyterian church. Uh, we moved, there was no Presbyterian church. Mm. Um, so I was confirmed in the Peace Lutheran church. Um, I currently attend North Point um, in Atlanta and Andy Stanley is I know world renowned for his message and you know his, his talk of basically grace. Mm. Um, and so you know, but for me, I really came back to faith um, when my sister um, got cancer seven years ago and, and had a really short battle with cancer, three months. And, 
you know, it was kind of in that moment that I, I changed from being faithful to openly speaking about my faith, mm. you know, not being uncomfortable to share it with people. Um, and so it's just one of those things. I'm, I'm committed to um, meeting people where they're at. You know, everybody has a different outlook on, you know, how spiritual they are, you know, what their faith means to them. But I'm going to meet them wherever they're at and not unlike as a basketball player where I want to make them a little better, you know, how can I, how can I help them, you know, be closer with, in their relationship with God? Mm -hmm. So sorry to hear about your sister. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah. What, uh, what does a Nikki Collin coach team look like? What do you hang your hat on? You know, I think most people would tell you defense. Um, certainly that was, you know, when I came to the WNBA in college, I'd been a defensive coordinator, not unlike people around here understanding that Bob Starkey or Vic Schaefer when they were with Gary Blair was a defensive coordinator. I was the same way in college. I was able to do that um, in the pros with Kurt Miller. Um, but I couldn't wait to get a clipboard in my hand as a head coach, you know, and, and dial up plays in the huddle offensively. So I think what they're going to see is a team that's going to play fast. Um, you know, we want to be the top teams in the nation in terms of pace, um, you know, but it, we're going to be a little more open style offensively, uh, but still get after the same way, you know, Baylor has always gotten after it defensively. So a lot of fun. Like, I think that I want the joy that I have for my job and the passion I have for, for coaching um, kids and leading and serving. Um, I want that to show when we play. I want fans to come in and see the energy before we the tip. Mm. You know, I want them. Um, I want our players to have fun when they play. You know that this is this is something they maybe only do for four years of their life, four or five years, and I want them to have fun. So I want that joy to to come through um, in their connections with the fans. You know, and and I, I want them to play the right way. I want them to speak the right way. I want them to be accountable. Um, you know, so we're going to do things the right way here. And I'm guessing uh, one of your first orders of business will be uh, getting a staff together here. Of course. How's that going? Well, my first priority, in all honesty, is, is, is basically, you know, re-recruiting this team. Right. Um, and, I, and I think a, putting a staff together is, is like a puzzle. You know, it's identifying one person that you love, that you think is a good balance to you, whether it's from a recruiting perspective or a personality perspective, um, and then that becomes dominoes, you know, because having a great staff is all about having people that aren't afraid, um, that aren't yes people, that are going to challenge you, that ultimately aren't afraid to be different, but then ultimately cohesive when you step on the court together. So um, it's, it's a work in progress, but I, I can promise Baylor Nation that we are going to have amazing people that are going to pour into these players the same way I'm going to pour into them. And you know, um, be a lot of fun to get to know. That's great. you got a plan. I can tell you've got mm -hmm. a plan. Well, welcome to Waco and Thank welcome you. to Baylor. You're going to love it here. Uh, there are so many good things about Baylor University and Baylor Athletics, and you're going to fit right in, so welcome to you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great to visit with. Great to have uh, on campus, on the job, part of the Baylor family, Nikki Collin, and uh, it's been, it has been a really fun week. How about this? Uh, she has a little softball in her background also, played basketball, but played softball also, was apparently really good. She's going to throw out the first pitch of the Baylor-Texas softball game on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So folks who are going to be there, it's 3 o'clock on Saturday and uh, or on television. Watch for uh, Coach Collin to throw out the first pitch. It'll be super exciting. Exciting. We'll get to see her in action for the first time. Uh, not not shooting hoops, but right. still still showing off her athletic ability. That's great. It's been a whirlwind week, hadn't it? But a lot of fun. And again, well done by Mac and the search committee. And uh, we just add to the uh, the legion of folks who say, "Welcome to Baylor, Coach Nikki Collin." And that's this week's Sikkim podcast. We appreciate you being with us this week. We'll be back next week with another edition of the Sikkim Podcast. In Texas, there's pea-sized hail and baseball-sized hail. Guess which one hit our house? We didn't even know where to begin, but we called our Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent, and he was so reassuring. He knew exactly what to do to get our house back into shape and our lives back to normal. Now, we're even more thankful for the roof over our heads. Visit Texas Farm Bureau Insurance today at tfbinsurance.com to insure your home for Texas size weather. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. You've been listening to a special edition Sikkim podcast. 
The Sikkim Podcast is a production of Baylor Athletics.